So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a pronunciation exercise. Okay. For every single member that is going to listen to this, how yeah. to properly say your damn name. Because everyone still calls you Ronnie, and you just allow it. Um, <laughs> so... I can, tell you, I can tell you how I teach people to say it. You told me. You told me, yeah, but you can say it. Okay. So, because, you know, us Americans, macaroni. Macaroni? But just get rid of the maca. Just Roni. Roni. And everyone goes, oh, got it. Roni. Roni. <laughs> like, it's, it's with an... Yeah, most people say, like, Roni. Yes. But it's like, like a strong R. Roni. Roni. I'm pumped to do this episode today. Uh, same thing I said to Corey. This is two weeks in a row that I don't have to sit across from Todd. It's amazing. Um, you feel kind of relieved? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Too much Too much pressure? I don't have to carry the show like I normally do. <laughs> 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 He's right behind the camera while I looked over to my side. Um, but uh, no, I, I'm pumped because one, like the fact that you're willing to sit down and do this because of what I want to get into today, how much, like, you came to the country in what, 2017? 2017, yeah. 2017. And we wanted you, sometime soon after that, as we met you, we wanted you to coach with us. And you felt like, no, 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 man, my English is not good enough. And now we have you sitting down to record a podcast. And like, of course, you're a little bit nervous, but like... Yeah, that that's crazy, bro. Yeah. That, that's crazy. Just me being here, like, be interview, even though with the, yeah, the, the, I didn't think that my English was good enough to be here and I'm here seated, you know, that's. What? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what did you uh, just say? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta say that again, no. Um, so you've been coaching with us for almost, it'll be, two years this fall two years this fall yeah, two years um tons of stuff we can pick your brain about but the main thing today is i don't know if i want to say the few people because i think there's a there's a good number of people here that know your backstory and how we finally convinced you to come coach with us and the ones that hear it all get pretty emotional and so um because it's a really it's a really fantastic story so that's the main thing today like you don't need to be nervous because okay. you don't need to teach like i'm sure that there's going to be teachable moments that come from this but um, all we're going to do is chat and, and just talk about how we all got to know each other. I say we all because Todd's being a voyeur over here in the corner. Um, if you keep hearing a camera snap, that's all him. That sound weirder than it actually was. No, it's weird. <laughs> um, so let's start with you found Strength Faction at some point. I'm going to butcher this. So I'm going to give yeah. like where I think would be good. You found strength faction at some point, but didn't know. I don't know if you were in the States yet. So I guess I'm going to, I'm going to push this back at you as questions. Yeah, yeah. You found strength faction at some point. Was that before or after you were in the States? And then um, at some point as you were going through strength faction, you were like, oh, let me see if there's a gym near me or something. And then you realized that like, no, no. I go ahead. You, I, I I'm butchering. You don't have. You you have yeah, I don't yeah, have. Yeah, you it, don't right? have the. So you're this gonna, is why I'm excited to get okay, this story awesome. straight, so I can stop butchering it. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so, I arrived here uh, on October 2017, and you know I didn't want this crazy, but it's truth. Like it's the truth. Like I didn't want to come to the states to leave here. You didn't want to leave Venezuela. I didn't want to leave Venezuela, exactly. Yeah. I was like, uh, well, I said, I, you know, imagine, imagine, I don't know, yourself today here, and all of a sudden, your wife tell you, like, you know what, I'm going to Canada. <laughs> and you say, like, oh, probably she's playing a game, like, she's telling me this, and because you're doing good here, but she didn't feel like you were doing good here. You could be doing better in Canada. So this different situation, because it's true, like the Venezuela was going through a lot of like insecurities. Um, you don't know if you're going to... The dollar kind of crash or whatever, like the... I would say not only that part that is like, it's a struggle, but I was doing good because I was training like an ambassador. 
I was in, let's say, I used to live in Sterling, but I, I used to go to Washington to train him in, a, in the best gym of Caracas, which is Washington, like the, the, in, in, the, it's in the Venezuela, yep. it's the Cabro. And my life was like beautiful, bro. I was <laughs> like, there was the only guy that I trained and he paid me like for 300 people because he was paying pay me in US dollars. And in comparison with Bolivares, it was, it was like, I was living the life, Yeah. but it was me, not my wife. She had to, she, 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 she's a lawyer, she used to be a lawyer there, and she had to go through some difficulties there, like she was so obliged to do stuff she didn't want to because she worked for the, for the government, you know, she was a, what do you call the lawyers that defend? Public defender. Public, she was a public defender. So I would say, I don't know, probably girls, women see far behind we. We are living in the press and they are thinking more like a way yeah. of us. I don't know. And she, I was living my life. I was like just training this guy. I had like, a, I was running a boot camp uh, on the weekends that was successful. Like, and plus I had like a nutrition coaching also at the same time. So if you, it's like, I was like super happy. I was like training only one guy, boot camp on the weekend. So I, I had plenty of free time. <laughs> so do you understand why oh, yeah. I didn't want to come to the USA? Yeah. Because I, I, I already know, like I've been here, like just, okay, let's go buy uh, clothes. Uh, when Massimo was about to be born, we came here to buy all the stuff that we needed for him, you know? So yeah. we had come and go like several times, but I, I have a heard, I, I had heard that it was difficult. It was something like a, as a tourist, completely different than being like working here. So yeah. I was kind of afraid to, to, to come in here. So that was the reason why I was avoiding. So my wife told me, hey, I'm gonna go to the United States I can't handle this situation. I don't know if you're gonna come alive from Caracas because it's dangerous, something can happen. And it was true, yeah. but I was not seeing it. And I said like, okay, go, <laughs> go, uh, uh, I'll catch up. I had a, a rotator cuff surgery. I said like, I'm gonna finish my, my rehab and then I'll catch you there with three months. Give me three months, I'll be there, but it was, thinking that she was going to repent like of being here for of, for the hard work that she was going to be through but that never happened <laughs> <laughs> so she started like hey how's your shoulder are you able to come i was like oh my god oh uh, not yet i i think i still need more recovery and blah 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 <laughs> And we, we were to, we, we went to this point like in which like we were talking through lawyers. We were about to get divorced because of my rejection of coming to the US. She was decided that she was going to stay with or without me. So we, we were talking about selling the apartment, selling the car, selling the stuff that we had there. And and literally like going through lawyers. Like and I was it was sad. Yeah. But then I remember she, she, I was like talking to a friend, she's a lawyer. She was in an advantage because I didn't know anything about law. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember I talked to a friend like, hey, I'm going through this situation with my wife, I'm fighting. Don't fight, just give, give her my number and tell him I'm your lawyer and she's gonna, and then that, <laughs> that sorry that that started to happen those conversation between them and and then he told me to do something that it was like hey Ronnie if you're serious about staying here send some money to your son could be a hundred dollars but it's gonna be like that like you you need to send that's your your, your child yeah. so you need to send and on the on the you know when you do a transfer that you that you put something like sustaining of my child or child, yeah. childhood support something like yeah. that. When I did that, she understood. She she being a lawyer, and I did that. I, and she saw the transfer, 
of money, child, childhood support. She's like, oh my God, Ronnie is going serious with this. So she, we, we stopped fighting. We had a, a conversation. He said, hey, Ronnie, what if, what if you come for the, just for the last time to the USA, you come, you see Massimo, and then you say goodbye because probably when I ask for asylum, your visa is going to be denied. Like, you can, you're not going to be able to come anymore to the United States. So I, I buy that. Like, okay, sounds fair. I'm, I'm not going to see my son anymore. I'm going to just be in there for two weeks. And then that was the plan. Like, I bought the ticket. I asked with my one and unique client that was the Panama's ambassador. Yep. Miguel Mejia was his name. And he told me, Okay, you can go. I even pay you in advance so you can go and your vacation, see you in two weeks in two weeks. So it was okay, see you in two weeks. Then I come here, I, s I saw what they were doing, what she was doing for a living. They were like sleeping in a uh living room in a what is it called inflate inflate like air like air mattress air mattress and then it, it was tough like the day starting like okay running and said when it was about to be like the two weeks i said like i i cannot i cannot leave yeah. my family in this position so i picked the phone called the ambassador and say hey miguel i'm not gonna go back to venezuela i'm gonna stay here and i remember i remember he said laughing like ronnie I think you were the only one who believed you were going to come. <laughs> I knew you were not going to come back. Like you were saying goodbye. So it was like the true story. I came with nothing to nothing, yeah. nothing. I left everything in Venezuela, my family, my friends, my life. And then like coming to your question, like, I started do, doing like every kind of, of jobs, like from taxi driver, from a Peruvian friend, like not Uber, just uh, a guy that had like cars and he gave me his car. It was like on, I arrived one day and the next day I was driving, like literally. Then I, I, I started working on Señor Tequila's, Alejandro's yep. restaurants in Carmen. Uh, that's the way I met them. So you can start seeing the, All the dots. Yep. So I met him. I told him I used to be a personal trainer. So we started training together at Gold's Gym. And I had this like idea of, okay, I'm going to start working on anything, but I would like, I would love to, to do like what I know to do, like training people, what I, yeah. I'm passionate about. So but it was like a dream. Like, how do I do this? And then I started like looking online, I, I reached this NASAM course. I took it. It was freaking hard to take. It was a like in a, a, in huge a second language, like second language, huge book. Yeah. And then is after like they gave me like six months and then it was me in front of a computer, tons of questions, like I would say hundred and fifty I don't remember exactly, but it was like a lot of questions. Yep. I pass it first attempt. I remember that. That was crazy. And then I started to feel confident, like, I can do this. Like, And then I had that. I had started also precision nutrition. Yep. And But I, I felt that I missed something. I missed, like, the in situ practice. Like, I need to train people to see how people, like, train here. It must be something different. Yep. And I remember I went to look for a job on like the regular gym, like uh, Gold's Gym. And it was more, it was something that they, they interviewed me and they said like, it was more like a seller. Yep. And I hated that. Like, no, I don't, I don't want to sell. I want to train people. Like, give me the chance. This is what I know how to do. But it was not, there was no chance. That it was, you're going to be a seller and... Well, it was like, you know what? I'm going to start doing stuff. And, and if, you, if you can see the picture in which I am with Todd that you posted like some time ago, you can see that I had an Instacart. Mm -hmm. Instacart. Mm -hmm. I, used to, I used to do Instacart on, on like 
at nine on Tuesday, you invited me. Hey, Ronnie. Well, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. I remember this. Yeah. I'm coming. But the the way I found beyond strength, a uh, beyond strength, strength, strength faction, faction, which which was, real quick for Todd and I used to have a company called Strength Faction, um, which provided continuing education to personal trainers and gym owners all over the world. So nice. that's the quick and dirty on that. So I I was like living nearby, and I I look for. C, I saw like uh, CFs, CFSC, CFSC, and then which I is another like, certification. Oh, and then I put like CFCS CF near, CF. near me. Yep, and it's crazy. It's just like hundred steps, so hundred steps away. <laughs> I used to live in the buildings that are in front of Costco. Yep. So I couldn't believe, like, what is this? Like, really? Because it was, like, how was the name of the guy? Of the guy? Like, it's in California, the the, the headquarters. Mike Boyle. The, it's in Boston. Yeah, Boston. Yep. So it was like. It can be true, like, and then I search, I, I search, oh yeah, there's a gym here, but how? And I started to look in, like, so for that info. It like, was probably that we were hosting them. You were hosting a, a for a certification, boom, just like we are coming up in a few weeks. Exactly. <laughs> so that was the way I reach you or Todd, mm. and then and then Todd tell me, hey, we're not doing that right now, but you can be doing like strength faction, oh. and that's how I get started. So do you think that's a that's the like the the best decision, bro. Like I was asking, like help me because I I just want to do like my next step to start on a. I, he promised like this is the best option that you're gonna have, yeah. and I believe. And for me, two hundred dollars, yeah, a month I, in a month, in the, in the situation that I'm explaining to you, I didn't even tell my wife about it. <laughs> you know, I was like feel confident. Like, you know what? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna yep. do this investment, and I remember it was like oh, I love it. Like the way you present it online, the way you were having fun on the videos, and all the I, I started learning like a new way of training. You 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 talk about stuff like even about I remember the table 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 of stable growth. Yeah, yep. I love that. Like how you could like. Um, how do you call it when you twist like, harder? Uh, tighten like, the legs, tighten like tighten the bolts depend, on the de legs. Tighten the bolts depending on when you're like more unstable. Yep. I love that. I, I fell in love immediately of the program. So the so so quick context, the table of stable growth was kind of gave this analogy of sitting down at a table like the one that we're on. If you keep hearing a noise, it's that right there. This table <laughs> rocks a little bit. And so I'm purposely pressing down on, on it with my forearms because you move a lot, which is cool. I'm not saying that like, stop, like you're fine, but like I'm doing that. So it's just funny because like this table does that, right? And Todd gives the analogy of like, if there's a little bit of shake, it's okay. But imagine if one leg was really short or if the legs were all different lengths, like the table would just topple over. And the way that we taught it was um, personal development, professional development, enrichment, uh, personal professional enrichment and physical. Mm. And so we had different definitions for those four legs of the table. Like, what are you, you know, where are you at and what are you doing with personal development? Where are you at and what are you doing with professional development, with enrichment and with your physical training, physical goals? And then there was like a categorization and how to know, like, like to rate yourself on a one to five scale and then what to do in the event of something being off or, or is it like, no, it's purposeful that I'm putting more energy into this leg right now, but it was just like a really good, um, awareness tool. So if anyone's like, what in the world are they talking about? That's, that's what Roni's talking about. So yeah, I fell in love with the, with the learning. I remember I finished the, f the four month block yep. Yep. and then I called Todd like, Hey bro, can you stop charging my, <laughs> my car? Because I say, yeah, don't worry. But you know what? Come in. I, I, I'm gonna give you another go for free. Mm. It was like, oh my god, really? But I, <laughs> he he offered that. He put me there, but it was like I don't want to be like. I know I, you. I know exactly. I, what, yeah. I, I don't want to be abusive. Like I, I'm yeah. not gonna enter to the calls. I'm not gonna just. I just was learning, re reading, yeah. and stuff. I was like respectful. I would say like, and then. Well, that year went by, then I lost touch with you, but I kept, I, I also like learned the way you train people here. It was like the strength, uh, at least three days a week, the endurance stuff, like the get up, the swings, uh, the, your structure. And I, in the very beginning, I'm gonna tell you like, I didn't believe like it, it was gonna work. <laughs> yeah. 
Like it was like coming from a more like physique uh, training, you know, and body part splits, body, body. Yeah. And then I said like, really, like just doing this small, like the, not, not small, but only that lifting yeah. and, and bench pressing on Monday and squatting on Wednesday and pulling. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> but you know what? It's 200. I'm, I'm going to try. And then I'm going to tell them like, bro, this is not working. I want I it was like I, I didn't believe in the system. But then I started doing it and I remember that my shoulder pain went away, probably for the mobility that we started yeah. doing. Um and there was I, also self assessments that drove you towards certain types of pressing and pulling that may have also just put you in better positions to be successful. And I, I didn't know like the macho man, the you know, I didn't yeah. probably I knew it but I didn't know how to call it. Like I I, then it was like all a learning process. It took me like those eight months, but I fell in love so so much that I remember that I kept, I talked to you like, hey, Chris, how much will you charge if I'm, I, I just I just want to keep the, the training portion. Yep. I just need, I don't want to train my my own way anymore. So that's, that's how I trusted you so much. Yep. So going that, you, you asked me like, how do I get here? Yeah. Like today, like as a trainer, it's just that training Alejandro. Well, well, hang on, because there's a big gap in there. So so everything we're talking about was like 2017, maybe into 2018. No, no, it was it was 2018 already. 2018. Okay. So, yeah. So into 2018, you didn't come here until 2022, but we tried to get you to and everything works out for a reason. And it couldn't have worked out better than it did. Because if you would have said yes back in 2018, like we didn't have a big role for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but you, as we talked about in the very beginning of this, didn't feel like your English. And I don't know, maybe that was just an excuse. I don't know. Um, but you you, so? I don't know. I don't know. But you, you didn't think that your English was good enough. Um, and we would always invite you into our staff and services. And you would come to a lot of them and, and you would hang out and you would learn. And we were like, man, this dude's personality is great. Like he, like one of the biggest things is like you, like people come in here sometimes with the degrees and with the certifications, but you know, there's, there's a, was it a thousand ways to skin a cat the saying like, there's a lot of different ways to do this. But at the end of the day, like this is what we do. You know what I mean? And to really like deliver on this, like you've got to believe in it, you know? And, and you said like, when you were first exposed to it, as a lot of people are, you're like, no, nah, man, no, nah, this can't be. But all of our best coaching situations are people who had their own personal transformation through a, a direct experience with what we do, right? And you were having that. <coughs> and so and so we're like, we, we, we need to get them here. So this is all 2018. So now just, just sharing that, because you're about to talk about Carmen and Alejandro, and, and, but that's 2022. But you were doing some pretty shitty jobs in the, in the interim, right? And, and I know you're going to talk about Carmen and Alejandro. I don't mean shitty, like you're thankful for those jobs. But you, like, you weren't exactly happy, I think it's safe to say. On the jobs, you mean? Like On the jobs be- before, at least, okay, then let me, let me give some why I say that. Uh, and then I want you to fill in like the whole Carmen Alejandro thing, but I'll jump ahead to, I remember Alejandro saying, you guys need to hit up Roni. Like he's, and I don't want to spoil the story, but it's like, he's driving a bus. He, he hurt his back. He's, he's pretty down right now. Um, you got to get him out of what he's doing. Like, so it was, bro, so, I'm, I'm learning that. I'm you learning didn't know that? Like that, like, like that detail. You didn't know no, that? I didn't. That detail, no. Yeah, I, dude. It was. It was more like I remember they telling me, "Hey, Ronnie." Uh, we uh, let me let me go back and uh, he didn't just randomly say that. We said to him because you referred them. Uh, I didn't. We, I didn't refer them. Well, kind of. We'll talk yeah, about that. Yeah, kind yeah. of. They only know about us because of you. Okay. Uh, we said to them how much we love you and how much we would love to have you as a coach here. And that's when he was like, you need to hit him up. Like, because they knew that I didn't know that piece of information. You know what I mean? Like when you told them like, 
No, we, you knew we were trying to hire. You knew, but it but it had been years. We kind of gave up on it. It was like, uh, well, Roni clearly isn't interested. And when we said that, Alejandro lit up. He was like, bro, like, dude, yeah. they are. Or he is driving a bus. He hurt his back. He's he's pretty in the dumps. Like he would he would he would be so excited to hear from you guys and like you got to invite him in. And you still said no when I reached out to you. You were still like, no. And we're like, all right, well then fine. Forget coach. Just come in. Come in and hang out. And um, and then we slowly coerced you into, yeah, coaching here. But go on. Yeah. <laughs> so well, not that the going to that piece of the of the story. Like, I remember I was training Alejandro. Yep. And I remember one day I told him, "Hey, do you know this way of training that I'm doing with you? Like, we warm up, then we do explosive movement, and then we do what we do, and then we cool down." I learned this here in the United States and I want you to know the guys and the place because I don't, I don't know, probably tomorrow I got deported and <laughs> you, you know, it was like being serious. Like you, I don't know, or, or I move, you know, I, yeah. I want you to know and she said, okay, let's go. And I remember we finished training. We came, you were not here, no. not you, not Todd. And I, it was this place already when okay. I came, this place. And I showed him, oh, they just moved. It was a bigger place when I came and blah, blah, blah. And the guy that was here kind of explained them what, what the system was. And and I remember when we went out, he said, like, Ronnie, what? why did you bring me here? I'm never going to come here. <laughs> like, like I'm, 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 I'm always going to train with you. So, okay, bro, I'm just saying, like, this is, I wanted you to know the place where I learned all the stuff that you like to do. Okay. Then I was driving the bus. I, I did, like, multiple jobs. So th this yeah. last one was driving a school bus, and I was doing it more, like, for the insurance, you know, yeah. and the stuff that you find on, on the schools. And then... I remember I was driving, uh, no, how was it? Uh, I was driving the bus one day. He called me, hey, Ronnie, you know, Carmen, get up today or this week. And she's saying, like, she wants to train with you. I find a way to train my wife. I was, like, working eight hours on the bus. Like, trying to see just your family. trying. It was, like, I didn't say no. But it was like, how do I find the time? And I remember it took me like two weeks trying just to figure it out what to, okay, how do we do this? Do I go to Bramblington? They live in Bramblington. Like, how? How could we make this work? And I just because I was super busy, because I was like, sometimes I forget that I had that call with him. He kind of, he, he called me like three times and then he stopped calling me. And then I was like driving the bus, you know, my job. And I remember I was going to to the barber shop to cut Massimo's hair or something. And I was walking, I was driving down the Magnolia, Magnolia Street. Yep. Where, and I saw Todd walking Stella. And just stopped by like quickly. Hey, bro, what up? Like, hey. And we're saying stuff like saying, hi, how have you been? Blah, blah, blah. And then at the end, he said quickly, by the way, thanks for sending Carmen. And in that moment is when I, I realized, oh, I haven't called Alejandro back. <laughs> <laughs> and he went to the place that, that I recommend. So you see them? Yeah. The magic happening yep. there. Yeah. So it was like, now I need to call and apologize that I didn't, you know? Yeah. I hit them. He said, no, I, we love the place. Uh, yeah, they both signed up. Yeah, they yep. both signed. And then I think you started to have a conversation with them. Now I'm learning here, sitting here, that they were like, hey, Ronnie held his back and telling all the story. And then I remember them telling me, hey, Ronnie, I think you have a good opportunity to work there. And I said like, oh, I don't believe so. I didn't, I didn't trust like I could like, manage like this kind of work you know uh speaking in english i i was confident about my coaching skills but not about my if i could connect well with people 
speaking in English. Yeah. That would be like my, my biggest fear. Yeah. Like, and then I said, no way. Do you think so? Like, but they were like pushing, yeah, Ron, I think you have the chance. They are doing the classes. They're looking for a coach and blah, blah, blah. But still, then you hit me a call. You, you call me and you say, hey, Ronnie, can we have a meeting here? Uh, Todd and I want to speak with you. I want to talk to you. And then, oh, that's kind of serious. I was doing a summer drive. Like I was doing, oh, yeah. working on summer. And I remember it was hot. I was on the bus. I came with Massimo, I remember. It was, I came with you and Todd Oh, here. I totally remember this. Still Massimo remember? was swinging around the rings in the back. But, but at that moment, you, you were like, okay, Ronnie, this is like what we want. We want you to coach here. Yeah. It was like when you told me in front, like seeing on my eyes, like it was like all sweat, driving the bus. I had to go for again yeah. to the school. It was, and I said like it was too much. It was like and I remember Massimo telling me, hitting me like, Dude. "Dile que sí, dile que sí, dile que sí," which means like, "Tell yes, tell yes, tell yes." <laughs> and, and I was like, "Massimo, no, no le puedo decir. Like, I can't tell that. I don't know." Like. But it was like the starting of the yeah, yeah. Of, of of me being here, and then yeah, I, I say, hey guys, help me. Uh, I don't know how much I'm gonna be earning. I don't know, you know. And then we started talking, and then it all makes sense for me, for my family. And then I I would say it took the best decision yeah. ever. Uh, yeah, like bro, it has been an, an amazing journey with you. It's awesome. Yeah, beyond strength. I think also. When you were like, I don't know, I don't know. We were like, fine, just come work out. It was like, we need to we need to get you back in here somehow. And that's when you were like, well, my back. And so then we were like, well, dude, like you got to go see Nate Crane. Oh, you gotta, that was, oh, that part, we gotta, cannot miss that yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. We don't need to go into those details. Yeah. It's not as pertinent to the story. But like, but I think that helped too is like, you had also lost some confidence from the of back course. injury. And um, so all of that was just like, all right, well, let's solve that problem. Like, like go see Crane. Let's get your confidence back lifting. Like, all right, now let's get you here. And then the funny thing is you, you officially come on board as a coach and you were concerned about how you, like how the reception would be with like, you know, I have an accent. I don't know if my English is that good. And, um, I remember we did, I think it was a welcome event, that baseball night. Oh yeah. It was like a welcome party for you. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I remember that was the moment where you were like, oh yeah, you were like so nervous. And then I remember, I remember like Dave Hudgens coming in and, uh, that's when you would say. Cir circuit what was the how what did you always mispronounce you know circuit circuit yeah i i just read it and for me it was circuit 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 yes yeah, circuit so a we're gonna do circuit a guys yes. <laughs> but i no one corrected me well and well but what was great is dave because and now you know dave dave is <laughs> dave is like a brother to all of us oh, right yeah, like yeah. and um but uh i remember your guard just like completely came down because in a in a loving way dave just roasted you he just made fun of you but while also making you feel more welcome than anyone could make you feel welcome like you know when there's like that person that like if they're not making fun of you or like you know something's no, no, like no, no. for him something's like, wrong like his energy is yes. completely yeah and it, it was like I, you say i felt like oh my god this is like this, these people love me like yeah. and i haven't realized like and then just having fun with me making fun of something that I said, but in such a funny way, yeah. you know, like, bro, yeah. He was talking like a Russian guy. Yes, yes. Remember? Yes. Like, he would do an accent. Like, yes, a different accent. He like, can't do accents mine, that well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was fun. It was fun. Like, yeah. And then, yeah, and just like Dave, a lot of people here, like, has welcomed me, like, wow, has opened me their, even their house. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is something I was talking with Todd just a minute ago, like how how this profession uh, opened you like opportunities, friendships, opportunities, or like connections yeah. that in in other kind of job you cannot have. You know, yeah. so they see you as an equal. They just want you to grow. They just want to see you in a better place. You know. It's yeah. because you are in the same page. You want to see them growing here yeah. and just they want to pay you back somehow, you know? Yeah. So I've been like, let's say, I don't know where to start, like invited to 
my first uh, and I guess I unique American wedding. Uh, oh yeah, where where you were and you super fun wedding and you eat half the oysters. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> you did too. Don't yeah. you? Don't 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 try and act like I was out of yeah. line with the oysters. Yeah. All right, yeah. we, uh, we we ate we, the we, oysters. We, they were delicious. <laughs> yeah. <anyway>. So <laughs> yes, we, we easily ate sixty dollars plus in oysters oh, that night. Wait, like if and those weren't dollar oysters, but if those were dollar oysters, we had at least Bro. sixty dollars worth of oysters. Bro. Yeah. So. <laughs> Just, just that opportunity that yeah. I had, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking just one little one. So yeah. imagine, you know, I just ate on Cinco de Mayo on a, on Alba's house. Oh yeah, you know? that's and just, awesome. It was like, and and you know, this guy, I'm going to the to a wedding, to a to a house. Like, hey, yeah. come eat with us, yeah. family, and let's say my first NBA game. Oh yeah, it was. Jim Corey, yep. he invited me to see. You know what I mean? Like all, probably, it's it's just like the whole bunch of opportunities. You know, like you you have like working in. I would say in this place, this is a fabulous place. Like from you meet you meet people from all over the world, yep. all different backgrounds, and and you learn from them like a lot. Yeah, I um, think like I say to people all the time. Not to turn this into like a business, like focus on the podcast, but like I think sometimes here, trainer or gym owner, and and like there's a little bit of like uh, you know okay, but like if you think about it, one we are we are like a it's not just expensive for expensive sake, but we're not cheap, right? Like this this is arguably the most expensive gym in the area, oh. um, not anywhere, but like it's it's up there. Like we're yeah, we're not and, cheap, right? Yeah. And um, and so it, it's, it's not, you're just like planet fitness and it's, and, and there's people with tons of money that go to planet fitness. I'm not saying anything about that, but the mindset of the type of person that comes here that invests in themselves, it's like, there are business owners, there are executives, there are lawyers, doctors, you know, surgeons, like, uh, it, and then right down to like regular everyday people who just take care of themselves, like, uh, so well, but like the the number of connections that right. trainers and gym owners have because like where else do you see people like most days of the week weekdays most days of the week have an hour of yeah we're like we're training but of course there's gonna be conversations happening so like real connection um and then like oh hey we're all going to do this thing or you know what i mean like it's just you 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 and i don't mean it in this transactional way no, no, um, no, it's not. It's, 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 it's not transactional. It's not. But it's, you just build this network that is like, but and it's legit. It's not like this, like, it's and I'm not knocking on these things, but you know, there's like BNI, Business Networking International, where it's like to be in the room, you've got to like agree to like make referrals to different people. It's kind of forced. Like, it's not like that. It's, it's just natural. You it's, have it's, kind of everyone here. They, they, they want to, they want to spend time with you. Yeah. Like, like for real, like, hey, yeah. Ronnie, let's say Blair, let's go kayaking. Yeah. Yeah. I went kayaking with him, Blair. Uh, this is like, bro, like, I don't know. Uh, so so my, for my, my aura ring. Yeah. Yeah. My aura ring. But I, I, right now I can't afford like a $500 ring, but yeah, I just recommend it from my heart to a surgeon, Cambis. And he's, he said, I, I How remember. do you like yours? <laughs> he, he said, "He said like, hey, hey, Ronnie, thank you for, for the recommendation and, and blah." blah. He started talking about the, uh, what's your what's your availability today, and what and he started talking. I was like, "Bro, I recommend it to you, but I don't have it. I just know that it's good because I know Chris and Todd have it." And blah blah blah. I said, "You don't have it? Tell me your size. You have one tomorrow and something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and but I'm going. I, I just want you to go like from that place for the wedding." The, even or or to the person that opened her house, you know, it's all like yeah. it's an em whole environment that you that you want to be. It's people that you know that cares about you. And know? you're not dealing with screaming kids on a bus. <laughs> 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 no, um, yeah. it's it's fantastic. There's one thing I want to go back and say, and I don't think anyone would actually think this, but one thing I didn't know the part of the story of you like being like I'm gonna stay back there and my family's gonna be over here. You didn't know. And and one thing that. I know about you is that you are a fantastic dad. 
watching you and, and, and Mosmo together, right? I can't imagine you not being around him. Oh, bro. Yeah. That would have eaten you alive. That would have eaten you alive. Oh, yeah. I will, I will, have, I will say I will have crossed illegally. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's true. Like, if, if they would have really, like, removed my, bi- my visa and stuff, I, I would have done everything. I just yeah. wanted them back. Yeah. I didn't know they were going to, she was going to stay. So, yeah. But yes. I just had to say that because I couldn't have someone listen to this and think he was, he was willing to like give up his son. And I'm like, no, nah, you weren't. Like, I know no, that there was, I know, no. you I, had more going on in your head than as you that. said, <laughs> as you said, probably in the same page, it was the Miguel, Miguel Mejia, the ambassador. He said, like, Ronnie, knowing you, it was not possible that you see your son. Yeah. No way. And you're going to, living under condition that you know that you could help to do better. Yeah. And then you're going to come back just because you want to train with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. So he said, and you were the only one who's, who thought it was going to come back. Yeah. yeah bro. Not in yeah. a million years. Not in a million years. Yeah. Anything else you want to touch on today? Mm, I just want to thank uh, you guys for the opportunity you gave me to like do the things that or the thing that I love the most is that is helping people like to be in a better position, coaching. So I think I just doing that by doing what I used to do in Venezuela here. I think a lot, uh, not a lot of people, immigrants have the chance to do the same thing that they used to be, yeah. uh, they used to do in their, in their country. So it means a lot for me. And, uh, I, and I think a lot of people, um, well, one, like, we're, we're equally as grateful to have you here. Like, there's no one, like, number one, you're like family. You know, we have this conversation, and there's no one as consistent as you. Like, you know, uh, like, like any um, real relationship, you know, sometimes you have misunderstandings and, and little, like, what? Like, what? what do you mean by that? You know what I mean? But, like, the one thing that... Uh, is like always, always, always. And, and I've said to you, is like, we don't have to worry about anything with you, you know? And it's like, I, I can think of the one time where you were like, oh, I overslept. And it wasn't even that you were going to miss a session. Like our, our thing is like, we open the doors and have the room ready 15 minutes before class. And I think you were going to be here just 10 minutes before class or five minutes before class or something. And oh. you were like blowing us up to apologize. And we were like, dude. And that was like, you had been here for, a, a, a while you know and um it's just like there's there are zero uh concern like we just we just have all the trust in the world with you and Thank you. it feels good and we're super thankful to have that and this is exactly why we've been trying to convince you to <laughs> to to come around for so long and and there was something that you said oh uh that i think is really beautiful and i think that people need to um probably understand more and i'm not going to get political here um because it, it, this really isn't about politics but just like what you said about not many immigrants get to do what they loved back in their home country and i just think um yeah uh, humans you know just it's just people it's just people and like i think that sometimes we can we can uh speak in labels or think in labels and you have i think everyone has uh and and maybe this like has a connotation of like a negative it's not a negative necessarily but everyone has a prejudice you know what i mean of like you you prejudice me like you you all right because you're this like i think these things of you good bad and different right mm-hmm. like but p- just people you know what i mean and it's like it's it's really cool um, to know what you've been through and to see you doing what you're doing. And like, um, it's just cool. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if what I just said <laughs> makes sense, but I think um, I'm, I'm happy that we can be a part of this story and I'm really excited for the future because this is just the beginning. Like, Thank this you. is just the beginning. Thank so. you for having me here. And just wanted to finish with like... Uh, message for everyone who's listening who's gonna listen to this is like be grateful for what you have 
you you don't know when you're gonna lose it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like for me, I I never thought I because Venezuelan Venezuelan people doesn't have this immigration culture like Mexicans, you know, Salvadorians. They they have like they they for days just like oh I'm I'm gonna go to the United States. Venezuela is a rich country, bad politicians, and right now we have the biggest eight million Venezuelans all over the place. All over. So I have a brother in Portugal, one is in Venezuela, I'm here in Virginia. So can you guess my mom's heart like yeah. in a triangle? Yeah. You know, going to everyone's house every year. That's crazy. Yeah. And just one one person. Multiply that by, by 8 million people. So don't take for granted, like, value and defend your freedom. Like, don't take everything you have for granted. It can be taken away. So enjoy and fight your freedom. Like, fight for your freedom. I don't think there's a better place to end than that. <laughs> so <laughs> love you, man. Thank you, brother. Uh, we're going to do this again, and we'll get into all of the amazing stuff that uh, you actually do here. You know, like it was cool to do the backstory today. Um, and I'm excited to do a follow-up one where we get into whatever we get into, because we could go a lot of different directions with you, um, with coaching and with your nutrition background. And so uh, I know there'll be requests for a follow-up and I'm just saying we're, we're going to do a follow-up. I'm not asking you, I'm just telling you. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. It would cool. be great to be here. Bro. Heck yeah. Thank Thanks you. a lot, man. <laughs>